theaters on Friday. With pre-sale tickets for midnight showings already selling out, this could be one of the summer's biggest blockbusters. Batman Begins told us how Bruce Wayne came to be Batman, recounting Master Wayne's original trauma stemming from his parents' murder. What was that, Joey? He disappears to the Far East and trains with a dangerous ninja cult. Upon his return, Wayne assumes his new identity and unveils his alter ego. I'm Batman. And sets out to clean up the crime and corruption of Gotham City. The Dark Knight picks up where that card left off. Christian Bale reprises the role of Batman as he battles his notorious nemesis, the Joker. Christian Bale is Batman, and he's with us this morning. Hey, Christian, how are you? Good, thanks. You, you, you haven't read the reviews you told me a second ago, right? Oh, you haven't yeah, seen no. them? Let me I... read a couple. And by the way, everyone I saw was great. Rolling Stone magazine says, Heads up, a thunderbolt is about to rip into the blanket of bland we call summer movies. Variety said, This is seriously brainy pop entertainment that satisfies every expectation raised by its hit predecessor and then some. Right. That's not too bad, right? That's not too bad, no. Does that, bad. does that take pressure off box office, Christian? Because you can't control box office. But at least you can say, hey, we made a movie that people thought was a quality movie. Yeah, that's all that we have. And, you know, you can just uh, evaluate it yourself. And, um, hey, look, I, I'm always somebody I kind of put my head in the sand when it comes to box office. You know, i got no control over it. And, uh, listen, I would love for people to... Uh, uh, get out there and see it, and uh, that would be wonderful. But, uh, you know, regardless, um, you know, it's not going to lower my uh, 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 thoughts on the movie, which is that uh, Chris Nolan has made a fantastic movie, which is not only a blockbuster movie, a roller coaster ride, but something which uh, you can really think about. Yeah, you know, it, it, it forces raises, you to think. It raises many ethical questions, you know, it's, uh, it really delves deep. Well, one of the questions that's talked about a lot in this movie and was talked about a little bit in Batman Begins, and that is, is Batman a hero or is is he an outlaw? Is he a vigilante? But, Where do you fall on this? Well, you know, he, he has uh, he's many uh, different personalities. You know, he um, I, I see him as having three different personalities. Uh, the, you know, the Batman character himself is a very true character. That is not a mask. You know, this is him uh, channeling his rage and allowing him to live somewhat of a normal life because he's able to, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, compartmentalize compartmentalizes yeah, a bit. all of his pain and his issues from his childhood. Um, uh, into that character. He has the public persona of Bruce Wayne, who is also, that, that's the true fake, you know, who, who is attempting to convince everybody that he's a useless, um, you know, money spending, uh, uh, a cynical, jaded uh, uh, playboy billionaire. And then you've got the very private side, who he lets very, very few people see. And he's got a code, and he, he's willing yep. to go right up to the line of breaking that code, and yet we rarely, if ever, see him cross that line. Well, but this, this movie involves him being very, very tempted and coming closer than ever to breaking that code. The code, of course, is that he will not kill. And, and he's tempted because he's dealing with the Joker, and, yep. and, and played by Heath Ledger. And in the movie, the Joker says, I'm an agent of chaos, and do I look like right. I'm a guy with a plan? No, right. I just do things, yeah. is, and it makes it sound like I'm talking about a real story, but is that why he's so hard for Batman to deal with? Yeah, because, uh, you know, everybody else, the mob, what are they looking for? They're looking for money, so they can be leveraged. You know, you can, you, you can buy them, you can uh, um, uh, 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 leverage um, what they're after, whereas when you come across somebody like the Joker, he is in it purely for the chaos. He wants to uh, highlight the hypocrisy of society, um, how much they emulate heroes, but when, uh, um, you know, they're inconvenienced and they have to step up to the plate and be a hero, very rarely do they actually manage to do that or have the guts to do that. So much was made, and I want to get and address this and we can move on, but so much was made of Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker, that it was such a dark role that in some way, perhaps, in real life, it caused him to slip across some line of reality and may have had some role to play in his accidental death. You were very blunt in addressing that and what I Read. You want to reiterate that? Well, I just, uh, you know, personally, I find it to be a, a complete lack of understanding of acting. I also find it very rude uh, uh, to uh, uh, try to create some kind of a soundbite for such a tragedy. You know, uh, the man was a complex man. He was a good man. But you know what? I saw him having nothing but the best time playing the Joker. You saw he no changes on him. No end. Listen, he was somebody who immersed himself completely in his role. Absolutely, as do I. But at the end of the day, uh, he was having a wonderful time making this movie. 
I, I say he couldn't have been happier and, and uh, during it. There's talk about even an Oscar nomination, which would be one of the rare posthumous nominations. You talk yeah. about immersing yourself in a role. You, know, you get paid to, to do the acting, and other people, other people get paid to do the stunts. Yet there was one stunt you chose to do. On, you stood on top of the Sears Tower. What's it, 110 stories? Yeah. Why'd you do that? Why didn't you just say, okay, stunt guy, come on in? Well, you know, it was meant to be another stunt guy, a very, very great stunt guy who doubles me often called Buster Reeves, but I overheard him saying he was heading up to the Sears Tower, and I said, no, buddy, sorry, you ain't doing that, you know? So um, we're looking uh, at this right now. What are you strapped in at your feet? What, what do you yeah, have on you, know, you there? I, I don't consider it a stunt. I think of it as an experience. I mean, look, I, I could have fallen off of there, but I would have just kind of banged down and surprised a few office employees down <laughs> below. But, you know, there was no way they were going to let me plummet 110 stories down to the bottom. Uh, so uh, it was an experience I wanted to uh, have, and uh, I try to do as many stunts as I can. But uh, you didn't do I, the bad part, though, right? I, I know my limits. Um, the bad part was something that only one man could ever master. Um, we had a lot of world champion uh, bikers. Um, I ride bikes myself, um, but no way in hell was I going to be able to master that. There was one Frenchman, Jean-Pierre Goy, who just is phenomenal. Everybody else got on that thing. Um, it works, uh, as with the Batmobile, as with the Batpod, what you see, it does everything. The Batmobile jumps the cars, the Batpod does everything you see. The problem with it is, as soon as you start to take a corner, it ended up on top of most of the riders, and it was only Jean-Pierre who yeah. could master that. I'm going to take it out in the plaza, I'm going to take it out later and freak out the people in Tribeca. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Go, go, go ahead and do that, you'll end up underneath it. Yeah, <laughs> which would probably not be the first. Let me, real quickly, in just a few seconds I have left, how old should a kid be before they can see the Dark Knight. I can't tell really. You know, I mean, look, my, my, my daughter loves the Joker, but she loves Darth Vader. She loves all the bad guys, you know, but uh, it, it, it deals. I think that what Chris has really managed that, that is that you can watch the Dark Knight as a purely entertaining roller coaster. Um, adrenaline rush of a movie, but if you wish, there are a lot of layers. Um, there are many ethical questions that you can raise. It's it's quite haunting, you know. It's yes. something which will stay with you for quite a while afterwards. And I'm not sure how much a child will uh, um, uh, be oblivious to that. Um, I, I would it's say I, I would say starting at about uh, nine, maybe ten years old, maybe appropriate age uh, for uh, kids to be able to deal with this. Well, Congratulations on great reviews. It's good to have you back. Thank you very good much. Good to see you. Thanks, good Christian. Night. We appreciate it. Thank you. The Dark Knight, by the way, opens nationwide this Friday in both regular and IMAX theaters. Check it out. Up next, why you